Hey guys, on today's episode of Exploring the Depths of a Niche Nobody Cares About, we're going to be talking about supplemental illumination on a night vision helmet setup. We're also going to be drinking a beer quietly in the background because I don't think the five people who are going to watch this video are going to begrudge me that. Ah, not bad. Today's video was made possible by our sponsor, Venture Surplus. If you follow these guys on Instagram, which I highly recommend, they have a lot of information on how to put together a very versatile chest rig using military surplus pouches and the TAPS rig. Most chest rigs are either pre-sewn, meaning that you buy one and hope that the assortment of pouches works perfectly for you and your desired loadout, or they are modular, meaning you buy one and then a couple weeks later you come back to the same website and you buy hundreds of dollars of additional pouches to try to complete the thing that you just bought. If you want to build out a chest rig specifically tailored to your needs, then military surplus pouches are a very good way to do it, and the TAPS rig is a very good basis for that build. Venture Surplus frequently stocks the TAPS rig as well as a bunch of Molly pouches that you can use to build out your own purpose-built chest rig. And yeah, there's going to be some comments from people arguing about the distinction between PALS, which is the way these pouches are attached, and Molly, which is the system in which these pouches were introduced, but guess what? Nobody cares. Check out Venture Surplus. There's a link in the video description. You can use the code HOPLO10 or, you know, just copy and paste it. It's a lot easier than trying to spell it. And you'll get 10% off during the month of January. I would also recommend that you follow Venture Surplus on Instagram because they've always got tips for how to set up this sort of web gear if you want to put something like that together on your own. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Venture Surplus for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to the show. So why would you need an additional source of illumination on your helmet if you're going to be using night vision anyway? Reason number one is to provide supplemental illumination when things get really dark, as in so dark that even night vision has a hard time seeing what's going on. And reason number two is to provide a signal to a teammate, either to let them know that you're there or to signal them in some prearranged way, like Morse code or something. Most guys are going to end up with a task light on their helmet. That is an additional source of low intensity infrared illumination just to help out your night vision device if you're doing something up close that requires a little bit more finesse. Some night vision devices have an onboard infrared illuminator, and that can be used as a task light. It's also sometimes referred to as like a map reading light. Generally speaking, though, the onboard illuminator on a night vision device or a small low intensity task light is not really for navigating or spotting targets or really recognizing anything in your environment. There's just not enough output for that. You can get a much more powerful infrared illuminator on your helmet. The main use for that is to provide umbrella illumination. If you go inside a building or inside a cave or something, then there is very likely to be no source of illumination whatsoever, and then even night vision can't see anything. Night vision multiplies the available light by many thousands of times, but if there's zero available light, if you multiply that by thousands of times, you still end up with a number pretty close to zero. A key feature with that type of supplemental illumination is that you need to be able to rotate it so it's pointing up or down and not straight forward because if you actually do need to raise your weapon and take a shot then you're going to be illuminating your hands and your gun and it's going to be bouncing straight back into your eyeballs and you're not going to be able to see anything. Also, every time you look in the general direction of a teammate you're going to blind the shit out of them and they're going to hate you forever. As far as signaling your location to teammate, then we have stuff like IR flashers. These things can either flash or have a steady on infrared light that allows people to see where you are. Obviously, it would be pretty cool if we had a Spectre gunship loitering overhead and they could see our infrared helmet lights and know where we were and thus where to shoot and where not to shoot. That's kind of unrealistic to expect. What it is actually useful for is signaling to a teammate, especially if you've got radio communications, but you can't see each other. Also, as cool as it looks to have a line full of dudes with their helmet flashers all walking together, it actually is really annoying because everybody behind the lead guy is going to have their vision whited out by a bunch of helmet flashers every second. The rule of thumb is consistent across all of night vision usage. Illumination sources should be used sparingly. So let's talk about some of the gizmos that I've used over the years, starting with task lights. This guy here is a Princeton Tech task light, but you can find these under myriad brands. This thing is just a flexible headed light. When you buy these things, they usually come with multiple different types of attachments. So something that will attach to like an arc rail, as you might find on an Opscore helmet, usually a clip you can just attach to a pocket. This one has, I don't even know what the hell this used to be, but I put a piece of adhesive Velcro on it so it can attach to a Velcro field anywhere that you might find one on a helmet. 
These things have a flexible head and a very low intensity light. So you can point that light at whatever task you're doing at the time. And depending on how much you wanna spend, you can either get one that is single color like this. This one is just red. Or you can get one that's just IR, or you can get one that has a larger emitter head that's got white and IR, or white, red, and IR, so on and so forth. There's also an even cheaper version of this. I think this is from MFT, but there's multiple brands that sell the same exact thing, and this is just an IR light and a red light on the same thing. You tap the button, it'll cycle through IR modes. You hold the button, it'll turn on the red light. And this thing needs to be attached to some sort of rail section. So either you have a rail section on your helmet and this thing is fixed in position, or you get a rotating rail section like the Theorem Variarc, which is super useful for attaching sources of illumination to the side of a helmet, provided you've got the right type of rail. For a long time, I used a Surefire Vampire light on the side of my helmet because this could provide not only task light illumination, although these things are way too bright for anything that's super close, it's going to really blow out your eyeballs. However, this thing is also extremely useful for umbrella illumination because it has so much more output. You put one of these things, again, on a Theorem Very Arc, or if you have the older style of Surefire body, you can stick it on a Unity Remora mount if you're using a 3M Peltor mount for your ear pro so vampire lights have quite a lot of output if that's what you need also the ability to have it completely safe so you're not going to worry about accidentally turning on a very bright illuminator attached to your head but more than that the ability to switch to white light if you're just like all right let's fucking take the nods off and get white light going so we can actually see what we're doing here as far as ir flashers or markers go we've got a unity spark ir and this little guy from nightcore these things are a little bit more appealing because they're rechargeable and they also have multiple colors and functions built in but the unity spark is extremely simple and that's why they're kind of nice this thing just velcros onto a helmet somewhere and they come in multiple colors so this one is ir only and uh, I don't know if it's on or off right now, which is kind of one of the problems with these. You can get these in other colors as well, like green or IR. So you might see somebody who has two of those on their helmet. Probably one of those is IR and one of those is a colored light. Hopefully they can remember which one is which just by feel and placement alone. These Unity Spark thingies are pretty cheap. They're like, I don't know, less than 20 bucks, I think. However, they're non-rechargeable and the batteries are not replaceable. So you buy them, you use them, and once they're out of battery... You throw them away. So you may want to periodically check to make sure this thing hasn't accidentally turned on in transport or storage. Also, it is possible, depending on where you buy them from and how they're packaged, that it may arrive to you already dead because it turned itself on, you know, in transit and the battery life is only so many hours. This Nightcore flasher thing has a rechargeable battery. You can plug it into USB to charge it, and then you can tap the button to turn on certain modes and hold the button to cycle through certain modes. It's certainly less intuitive as demonstrated by the fact that I can't remember how it works right now, or maybe it's out of battery. There are, of course, a lot of other options. There's the Hellstar strobes, which are a lot more expensive, but give you a lot more options. They're also bigger and heavier. And then there's the old school style strobes, like the MS-2000, which is really cool because it gives you those G-Watt vibes, but as an actual strobe or helmet-based IR marker, it's a very poor choice in Square Brackets current year. Something you may notice in common with all these lights is that they're not currently on a helmet, and that's because I don't use any of these anymore. This is what I'm using now. This is a Streamlight Sidewinder stock. It's called the stock because it's got this stock coming out the front of it. There is an older, older version of the Streamlight Sidewinder, which is more like a, a clip-on light. I guess you could put it on a pocket or something or a piece of LBE. And that one does not have the flexible stock. This is one single device, which is fairly affordable and also has all of the functionality combined into one. This thing is a task light with three colors, white, IR, and color mode. I think some of them are blue, some of them are red. It also has an IFF flasher on the back side of the device, which is infrared. The real downside to the Sidewinder stock is that it's large enough that it takes up almost the entire top side accessory rail of the helmet. So back when I used to use Comtax on the Peltor 3M style mounts, I didn't have room for it. So I used the Unity Remora mount, which piggybacks onto the 3M Peltor hearing protection mounts, and then I put the Surefire Vampire on top of that. Since I switched to using the auto noise barrier tack headset and the auto mounts that attach at the rear, I all of a sudden got all that rail space back on the sides of the helmet, and now I've got room for the Sidewinder stock. 
This thing has a relatively complicated switchology, especially compared to, you know, any light that just has a one button to turn on or any IR marker that just has two modes, you know, flash, solid, and then off, obviously. I guess that's three modes, sue me. This thing has a mode selector wheel at the top and it's got this little ridged thing at the back so you can feel what position it's currently in. So when the ridge is to the back, it's off. When the ridge is to the front, it's at IR. And then when the ridge is to the side, it's in one of the two uh, visible modes be it white or color. And again, this one, the color mode is red. So you've got the color slash off switch on the top, then you've got the button to turn it on. And then if you want to engage the IR IFF flasher, you've got to remove this little metal clip, slide that down to the back, and then you flick this switch to either side. And then it turns on the IR flasher. So this thing is pretty nice because you can make it completely safe. And then you can also use it as a task light as well as an IFF light. You could, in theory, use this for signaling. What you can't really use this for is umbrella illumination. It just doesn't have that much output. This thing is quite weak compared to a surefire vampire. If we see here, we go into white light mode, then we can hold the button down to increase the intensity. And even in maximum intensity, it's still a very dim light. Like the various Princeton Tech task lights, this thing comes with a couple of different mount options. This one is the Opscore style rail mount. It also has this little screw to actually secure it pretty solidly into position on these rails. So it doesn't seem like it's in any risk of falling off. This thing uses either a CR123 or a AA battery. So again, kind of a flex fuel situation there. This thing ends up being a lot lighter, smaller, way cheaper than the old setup I had, which is a vampire light on a little flexible mount and then a actual IR strobe on the top of the helmet. So yeah, the Sidewinder stock, highly recommended because it accomplishes a bunch of things for not a lot of money and not a lot of bulk added to the helmet. The caveat, of course, that it's not going to play very well with any side mounted hearing protection. Also keep in mind that it does a bunch of stuff, but it doesn't do any of it particularly well because it's a very general purpose device. I haven't found myself missing the high intensity umbrella illumination because I don't often go caving or raiding nuke silos with my night vision setup. If that's something I was doing all the time, then yeah, I'd put the vampire light back on, of course. Anyway, hope you guys found that informative. If you like this channel, subscribe, subscribe star, link in the description. Yeah, I mean, come on, you get it, right? Have fun out there. See you guys next time. I know, but I mean, you understand why I'm not falling for this, right? On account of that whole part is just visible, right? <laughs> what do you, what, what do you want me to do, man? Okay, at least you figured that out, finally.